Well, thank you all again so much for joining us this morning at Coffee and Quality. Great to have you here um, on this Thursday morning to share share your time with us. Um, if you haven't already, please share your name and agency in the chat. We always love seeing who's in the room with us today. If this is your first Coffee and Co Quality, welcome. Um, and if you have come to Co Coffee and Quality before, welcome back. So glad you joined again um, and glad to see you here today for this session. Um, this session, you know, we've been doing Coffee and Quality now since 2019. And so we did a similar session on logic models back in 2019 as one of our first um, sessions. And so we're excited to, to revisit this topic today. Um, but just a reminder on coffee and quality and kind of really our ground rules um, as we engage in the space, because we'll, we'll be using the chat, we'll be sharing out verbally through, you know, the mic, we'll be going into breakout rooms. And as always, this is a safe space to learn and share. You all have different vantage points of what data and what continuous quality improvement looks like at your organization. Um, and so I wanna make sure that everyone feels like we all share the air here. Um, and then also wanna keep an, keep an open mind and heart to that as we are sharing the air, you all have different perspectives and so wanna give room for that. Um, we are gonna ask that you participate and engage with us today. And that just helps bring it back into your organization into the work that you're doing. Um, and so thank you so much for that. Um, I always like to start with this commercial part of Coffee and Quality. We do have a Teams channel that you can engage with um, throughout, in between sessions, throughout your day. Um, we post resources there, encourage other folks to post resources there as well. Um, we have quite a few different channels, but our, our Coffee and Quality channel is where we put all of our data evaluation and CQI related topics and, and comments. So if you are not on that channel and you want to be, you'll... Um, um, please put your email address in the chat and Ming, you will make sure you're, you're added in there. Um, so with that, today's session is focused on logic models. Um, you know, we'll have a little bit about the basics of logic models. Uh, then we'll go into a conversation on how to use logic models as a living document. Um, my mind tends to think in a logic model, um, and I strongly believe you can use them in any situation as evident by a birthday party that has a logic model, um, because it really is what's your roadmap, what's your plan for what you're about to do, um, and what you're about to do as it relates to your goals. Um, and so hopefully this birthday party planning logic model will inspire you to think outside of the box when it comes to your own program and agency logic models. Um, and oftentimes I hear from folks like, oh, we have a logic model, we haven't updated it, or I'm not sure if we should be updating it. And so this is me giving you permission in the little space I can to be like, consider updating it. If you haven't updated it in a while, please do look at it, see what's changed, see what's different from how you do your work to what you have on your paper. And I think today you'll get a little more insights into how to update um, through the team. So Julia is going to walk through definitions and elements and structure. Elias is going to cover style, examples, tips, how to use logic models. Um, Mingyu is going to be helping hold down the chat. Any questions that come up, please put them there. Um, really want to engage y'all in this session and this topic today. Um, and so to start, we are going to start out with a Minty poll. Um, so if you'll go ahead and go over to Minty.com, you can use your phone, open up another tab on your browser. Our code for today is 42069866. So that's Minty.com. I'm going to do it on my phone as well. Minty.com. And then your code is 42069866. And so your first question up is, what's your favorite food to prepare? Let's see what the folks are saying. Cookies, yes, you are my kindred spirit, the one who put cookies. Um, cookies as well, that's probably one of my favorites to prepare. Um, oh, pizza, bread, flan, beans. Oh, that's probably a lot of steps involved with beans, depending on how you prepare that, yeah. Pecan tarts, sausage and potatoes, peanut butter and sauce, veggies and noodles. Ooh, that's delicious. Spaghetti, curry, pasta, things in a box. I appreciate that. There's instructions on boxes, right? How to do stuff. Yeah. Lasagna, lasagna soup. Um, give a little bit more time. Yeah. 
any type of baking, anything I can throw in a smoker. Ooh, that's great as well. Lots of different things. Birthday cakes, scratch dumplings, gumbo. Yes, it is gumbo weather, isn't it? I mean, such gumbo weather right now. Um, fried Oreos, ramen. All right. Thanks, y'all. So kind of different foods to prepare. You know, as you go back into like thinking about a logic model, there's definitely steps that are involved, elements that you have. And so kind of getting you in that mind frame when we think of like, food that we prepare, um, all different kinds, really, hopefully this is, you know, not making you too hungry here at 9 a.m., um, but thanks, y'all. We'll, we'll go to the next question, um, and this one is a, you know, what, give it, tell us what your experience is with logic models. What's your experience level? Are you a beginner? Are you kind of somewhere in the middle? Are you advanced? Um, you might have to hit refresh if it's not coming up. Expert, expert, people are putting in the chat. Activate slide, there we go. Okay, well, having a little technical difficulty with Minty. Sorry, it's not working, but let's use the chat. Here we go. What's your, what is your level? Are you beginners? So we've got some beginners somewhere in the middle, middle, somewhere in the middle, middle beginners. Okay, so feeling some beginners, some middles, middles. Let me see if I see anybody do advanced, beginner, beginner, middle, advanced. Ooh, got advanced. Yeah, Margaret Ozer, you are advanced. Yes, logic model. Yes, beginner, beginner, middle middle okay so a little little more on the middle beginner oh emily you are middle to advanced as well i could see that yes um beginner okay feel free to keep throwing it in you know are you beginner with logic models kind of somewhere in the middle are you advanced in using logic models um great middle beginner middle some, some middle things okay Okay, let's let's go into our next question and we'll just keep using the chat. Um, and so, you know, put in the chat, how are you currently using logic models? Um, how are you using your logic models? What What's its function right now for you in your program, in your agency? Folks, get a minute to put it in chat. Okay, to help train new staff on program evaluation, strategic plans, research. We have one for each grant department, program evaluation, the one thing you look at yearly in your CQI meetings, project goals, performance indicators. Um, program evaluation, currently revamping them as we consider metrics and client feedback, using them for granting, reporting, applying for funding, yeah. Um, need to complete one, you did one in 2021 and had staff changes. You know, staff changes is also kind of a great time to be like, let's reset. Did, is this what we were planning to do? It can be great for, for orientation like that and also just to make sure y'all are all still on the same page um research regular change it program flow charts program goals evaluation so seeing some themes here some similar ways you're using it um hopefully some of these maybe spark something for you too if you're if you're not using a logic model in that way this gives you the opportunity to kind of explore that um so with our our logic model hats on and kind of that thinking i'm going to hand it over to julia to kind of kick us off into the into the content today um so thank you and here's julia My mouse took a break. Okay, I'm back. Um, I, every time Zoom, I, this happens every time when someone switches presenter, like everything moves to different screens and then you have to scramble to get it all back together. So we are good to go now. All right, good morning, everybody. 
Um, thanks, Jessica. And so um, as we go into kind of learning more about logic models, we're going to start with some definitions and things to consider when you're creating your logic model. Um, next slide, please. All right, before we go too far into it, um, we can look at how logic models support CQI or continuous quality improvement. And so we define CQI as the systemic use of data to improve effectiveness of your programs and services to communicate their value. But CQI is more than a definition, it's more of a practice. And so next slide. And so CQI um, is really this like human driven cyclical model. So it should be dynamic, alive and ever evolving with your agency. Um, and most agencies, we look for a specific CQI team for a lot of agencies, you're already doing a lot of this work where you're going through the cycles of um, delivering services, collecting data, reviewing the data, um, and then implementing changes based on your data. And, um, and as you can see, it's always cyclical. So there's always ways to collect data and kind of um, update what you're doing based on that feedback. Um, next slide, please. All right, and so there's um, a couple core components to CQI. Um, logic models aren't mandated by like United Way or any of our reporting, but it's super useful to have them um, to kind of center your goals, um, especially when you wanna like start a new program or you're trying to refocus on what you're trying to accomplish with your program. Um, and there's these core components that you wanna consider when you're um, doing CQI at your agency. And so um, core components of the strong continuous quality improvement process um, can include um, leadership buy-in and support from leaders and your staff and your board um, supporting the CQI process. Um, a formalized CQI plan um, that is updated every um, every two years, at least every two years. But again, it's always good to kind of reevaluate your your programs as you go. Um, you want a diverse CQI team in your office, and so for some of y'all, that's you know your whole staff. You're an office of three, and so you're all working on it together. Others, you have a really large agency where you have a team of interdepartmental people working together to kind of incorporate this data and um, improve programming. Um, you wanna collect data that is directly connected to your program services. Um, this data has targets that you can build on um, through annual successes and challenges um, based on kind of planning and what you're seeing in the results. Um, you wanna try to incorporate as much client feedback as input as possible. Um, because they're the ones that are benefiting from your programs, they're the ones that we're trying to serve, and so you want to make sure that you're collecting feedback directly from those you're serving um, to see if your program's doing what you want it to do. Um, you want to research and implement industry standards and best practices, depending on kind of what programming you're doing. Um, and then, you know, we have all kinds of different trainings and um, supports available to you. Um, even if you want to just chat with us one on one about what CQI is and how you can incorporate it, um, we're kind of we're always here to help you out um, in that department. And so real quick, I'm going to put in the chat a link to a ooh, that's the code, a link to a survey that y'all can um, fill out if you want more information on CQI support, or you're looking to kind of dig a little deeper into it. Um, let's see if this cooperates. No, it doesn't. Jessica, would you mind grabbing that link? For some reason, I can't copy it over. All right, Mingyu, if you'll go to the next slide. All right, so what's a logic model? Um, if you're at the beginning stages of logic models, don't worry, they're not that complicated. They're actually kind of fun to get through um, and work through with your agency. Um, but they're usually a visual representation of to show the connection between your program's resources, activities, and goals. Um, em, em, uh, ooh, can't talk this morning. Elements of a logic model are um, the purpose or the assumptions that you're making for your programs, um, the inputs, the activities, the outputs, and then the outcomes that you're hoping to see. Um, logic models can show how a program is expected to work. At their best, logic models are dynamic and useful representations of programming that you can see and you can kind of flow through all of your programs and kind of see what you're working towards. And it'll be a guide for evaluation, planning, staffing decisions, um, presentations even. Um, at their work, at their worst, logic models are merely statistic descriptions of your of your structure. 
Um, they're never evolving. They're not really useful. Um, we don't want that. And so we're going to give you some, some tips to, to build a really strong one. Um, and strong logic models can speak for themselves. So the really cool thing about having and building a logic model, and we'll talk later about kind of style and what they could look like, is that you can share it and you should be able to have anybody kind of read what your goals are and your program, what your programs are doing just by looking at your logic model. Um, and it really kind of takes really complex systems in your agencies and simplifies it visually for, for people to understand kind of what it is you're doing. For a lot of us, we're in the work every day, all day, and like know every single thing that's going on. But for someone outside of your agency, they're not going to be as familiar. And so having this visual representation is really helpful for, for others to kind of understand where, where things are going. Um, all right, next slide, please. And so we wanted to give you a little example of a logic model that we've used here to represent our goals for second century vision um, and our common metric structure. So if we can click once, um, we start with our purpose and assumptions. So our um, purpose to start with second century vision was that there was a huge demand that existed with 47% of households struggling to make ends meet. Um, and that data was before COVID. So we know it's much probably much more higher now um, and we kind of looked at everything and the, what we're assuming is the critical, uh, it's critical to meet the demands of our clients. And so we wanted to um, accelerate impact as the, can, as the need continues to grow. We want to integrate programs in order to service Greater Houston um, and those most affected. Um, we wanted to find data needs and measure and apply towards apply them towards impact, um, and then obviously continue to raise fund to drive impact in the community. Um, one more click, please. And so then you want to look at what your inputs might be. Your inputs are your resources. Like, what are you going to need to kind of accomplish this work? And so for us, so as we were kind of looking through this, we realized, um, you know, it's the households that we're trying to serve. So anybody living. Um, between zero, uh, an income of zero to the Alice survival threshold, so those living in poverty and those in the Alice populations. Um, we looked at our four service county or four county service areas that we divided into 13 regions. Um, there's community volunteers and stakeholders that we need to help us with this work. And then obviously y'all are community partners. So nonprofit government agencies that are doing the work um, that are helping us get to our goal. Um, so one more click. And so then you have your activities. So like, what are you doing? Um, you have your assumptions, you have kind of what you're looking to input, and then what are you gonna do with that? And so um, the work we do with our inputs are tied closely to common metrics. And so activities include the services that are along the integrated client journey through financial stability, early childhood and youth development, healthcare, escape from violence and basic needs. Um, and then additional activities that you wanna keep in mind too is like, how are you gonna be tracking and measuring data? Um, for us, it was how are we going to do that along the integrated client journey, um, and then we also lead convenings and collaboration between our partners. And so those are the activities that we're doing to help us get to our goal. And so um, one more click, please. And so um, as you're looking kind of through this, ours is going from bottom to top, and we've included um, a lot of inputs and activities, but that's not exhaustive. And so your logic model doesn't have to have every single thing that you're ever going to do ever for your project. It has to have kind of the overall structure of what you're working towards. And so um, in our integrated client journey uh, for our metrics, we have um, kind of goals where we monitor progress throughout the journey. Um, and then we envision a variety of outputs that relate to the volume of work, both and outputs can be short term, intermediate, long term goals um, and indicators that will lead into the common metrics. And so one more click. And so um, for our integrated client journey, we have four metric metrics that measure the process that the client can go through in the journey. And so um, for us, those are United Way will foster and support coordination between agencies in the journey to ensure activities or activities into your services are accessible to clients in a timely manner. Um, we'll support the creation of a trusted data sharing practice through the journey. Um, we'll support programs and partners um, in being versatile in order to meet the community needs in real time. Um, and then we'll support agencies in creating a journey experience that is client driven, accessible and personally successful. So one more click. And then those metrics on the integrated client journey lead into our service metrics. And so 
Um, those measure the success of a particular safety net or integrated service. For example, for financial stability, we have things like people increase their income or increase their savings or acquire assets. For early childhood youth development, we have youth demonstrate college and career readiness. For healthcare, it's people engage with healthcare, behavioral healthcare. For escape from violence, it's people increase their safety. For basic needs, it's people are able to meet their basic needs. And so our model depicts how our collaborations across the regions and the integrated client journey will lead towards creating opportunities for individuals and families. And so when you're looking at this, you can kind of read through the whole process and kind of see what we're, what we're hoping to accomplish, like where we're starting at, and then what are all the things we're doing to get there and then to measure that success. And so now we're going to pop into a fun little activity. Um, so next slide, please. All right, so um, let's imagine um, that you, how your staff may answer this question. So a potential client comes in and asks you, what do your programs do? How do you make a difference? Um, you know, what's going to happen? And so how, how might you respond? What would that look like? And so um, just from around your office, grab a sheet of paper and something to write with um, and take a few minutes to draw how you might respond to this question and draw your program. So I am not a drawer. I am a stick figure gal all the way. So it doesn't have to be amazing, um, but just kind of draw an idea of what, how you would answer that question, kind of what that journey might look like. Um, we'll give you three to five minutes. We'll see how long we have um, to do that. And then we'll probably call in a couple people to share if you're willing. So grab a sheet of paper and draw your program. What does it look like? I'm gonna play two. That's, again, I don't draw. I'll try to put on some light music to, to the background. We'll see if it works. I still feel like Zoom needs to partner with some like um, copyright free music service to just like have it ready. Can you hear the piano guys in the back? No? Mm, just barely, it's not picking it up. Give you one more minute. All right, we can go to the next slide real quick. All right, so what does your picture look like? This is not um, a critique of your drawing skills. It's more of a how advanced do you, like how much detail do you know or wanna share about your program? And this is kind of what we're getting at with the logic model. It can be really basic, but not super informative, or it can be this masterpiece of like how your program is running and it's amazing and like you can learn so much from it. And so I'll share mine, I'll be brave. Um, and so I literally just have stick figures. And so we work with different triangle shaped agencies um, that work in the community that then lead people to success. Those are exclamation points of excitement over our client's head. So there you go. So mine was pretty simple. Um, does any brave soul want to share theirs to see what they were kind of looking through? I will call on somebody. I'm not afraid. I see lots of familiar faces in this crowd. Oh, awesome, Aaron. 
learning cohort buddy for the win. <laughs> I will say uh, it is stick figures today, so don't expect anything from me. <laughs> so I have the different program areas here. So we have like Meals on Wheels kind of being represented with giving food. This is our interfaith relations and community partnerships. You see they're in the community and their partners are holding hands. Um, this is our refugee resettlement. I put resettle here. <laughs> and um, this is like our volunteers in the area. So I just gave them a couple because I wasn't sure how to represent volunteerism. Yeah, that's awesome. You're like showing kind of what all your agency does. So go ahead yeah. with those. Great. And Linda, brave, another brave soul. Do you want to share as well? Sure. Let's see if I can put this up there. Oh, I think it's not you have clear to unblur because, your background. Yeah, I'll have to unblur my background. I'll do that. Let's see. I have to remember how to do that. Ah, you might go ahead, Julia. I think I need to figure that out. I'm sorry. Okay, no worries. But thank you for wanting to share. Um, and so this was just like a fun way to get a sense of kind of what um, a logic model might look like. If you have one, you really want to share it, you can put it up to the screen and we can just kind of look over everybody's if you're so inclined. Um, but uh, we can move on into some elements and structures of what what will go into the logic model. Thank you, Verlisa. Love that. Um, I saw you on my little screen bar there. Awesome. Thank you so much for the participation. That was fun. Um, we can go to the next slide. All right, so um, now we're gonna move into kind of the elements and the structure of logic models. And so this will be the real kind of what to include um, in your logic model. So we can go to the next slide, please. And so um, let's look at kind of just what all goes into a logic model. And so we're gonna start with the assumptions or the purpose. Um, so what motivates your need? Um, like what is it that, um, you know, what's your mission? What are you trying to accomplish? And so this can be expressed as a problem or as an opportunity um, that the program is trying to address. And so in our example earlier of the second century vision logic model, um, our assumption with it was that there was a huge demand for services that existed with the 47% of households that are struggling to make ends meet. Um, in another example, if you want to use like a youth mentoring program, um, the there's like a community focus, like the assumption is that the a community focus on enhancing healthy youth development to improve um, high school dropout rates. And so they the assumption is that mentoring will lead to these great outcomes. Um, some folks will link their mission um, kind of to that assumption or purpose um, as a method to kind of send to your program if you're doing kind of a larger logic model for your whole agency. Um, next slide, please. So then you have your inputs, um, or they can be, for, be referred to as like your resources, your infrastructure. So like, what are the raw materials that you need to conduct the effort of the initiative? In the birthday party example, it was decorations, it was food, it was tickets to the zoo, it was all those kinds of things that you need to like accomplish the goal. And so in our example earlier, it was you all, the community partners, um, volunteers and stakeholders are 13 regions and then the households that we're serving. Um, imp inputs can also include constraints to your program, so such as like relationship uh, regulations or funding gaps, um, which could be barriers to um, meet your objectives. And so you can also include those things as like, you know, we're aware of these barriers and we're going to work on them as part of it, but it's something to keep in mind as part of the whole model. Um, and then another example for like youth mentoring, as I was mentioning, um, the materials are, you know, a coordinator to get all the volunteers ready to go for the mentoring program, agreements with your school districts, endorsements from parents and different community agencies. Um, so it really kind of varies based on what your agency does. Um, next slide, please. And so then you have your activities or your interventions. So what will the initiative do with the resources that you've stated um, to direct the course of change to accomplish your outcome? Um, so in our example earlier, it was um, the services that were included in the integrated client journey, um, like financial stability and early childhood youth development. Um, and then additional activities could include tracking and measuring your data, um, convening groups, that kind of thing. Um, 
the inputs is, you know, it's what you do. So for some, for some agencies, it may be outreach, counseling sessions, PSAs. Um, for the mentoring, it could be um, how you're going to train your mentors, how you're going to get kids into the program. Um, and these are tied directly to your program outputs and outcomes. So what are you going to do to get your results? So next slide, please. And so then we have our outputs, which are different than outcomes. And so keep that in mind as you're working on these. So um, the outputs are kind of what evidence is there that your activities are being performed as planned. So um, the outputs would be the volume of work that you're accomplishing with these activities, the average time between services or types of services. And they're usually, expre they're usually expressed as the number, like blank number of um, the output. So um, it could be something like the number of mentors that you trained um, for the program or the number of youth that re you referred to your program or the frequency um, that you're going to hold your mentoring sessions, all that kind of stuff could be your outputs. Um, and mapping the process like by which your outputs occur and then how you're me measuring them. So measuring is very critical in, in this logic model idea, just as we talked about CQI, you want to make sure you're collecting this data that then informs kind of where you go next. Um, and so the next slide, we have our outcomes. And so outcomes, which are client focused, they're kind of what's going to be the benefit to your client for going through your program um, that you're putting all of this work into. So it describes a change in people due to the services you're providing. Um, and again, that can be a short term change, like an intermediate change or a long term change. And so think about creating your program's logic model with um, other programs you're connected with. You can also do this as like a collaboration. So in doing so, you might identify areas where you and a different agency could share resources. Um, you could develop activities to better serve your clients together. So that collaboration piece. Um, and you could fill in gaps for each other too. And so um, those outcomes obviously are the benefit for your client. And then, um, you know, you can find ways to like better increase those outcomes through collaboration based on kind of what you found from your outputs too. Um, next slide. All right, so how do you structure your um, logic model? Um, it can be a variety of ways. You're going to see a whole lot of different examples um, in a minute about kind of what they could look like. But for the most part, there are two kind of structures that your logic model can focus. And so one is the if then, and then the other is the but how. So um, we'll talk a little bit more in detail of them next. But for the if then, it goes from bottom to top. So if you do this thing, what are all the things that come next? And then the but how, it's from top to bottom. So you want to do this thing. You have your your the change that you want to see, and then how are you going to do that? Um, so we can go to the next slide, and we'll talk more about the if then. And so for the if then version, you want to just think if we do X, Y is going to happen. Um, so you build it from bottom up or left to right, um, and you want to think about the very next thing that's going to happen if something occurs. So like in the image here, it's if the activities happen, then this change in knowledge will happen, then there comes a change in behavior, and then a change in the condition or status of your, of your client. Um, as we discussed earlier, um, logic models have a variety of uses. They, um, sometimes they can be like clarifying the structure of your agency and your activities. Um, but in other cases, like here, the logic model, like we've talked about before, um, can be about evaluation and outcomes and measurements and how you're going to do that. Um, and then for the next one, if we go to the next slide, for the but how version, um, it starts with the end results. So if we have Y, what was X? What came right before that? Um, and so you want to think about what's necessary to achieve the outcome. Um, and so you have this change in condition or status that you want. Um, and it happened because of a change in behavior, because of a change in knowledge, because of these activities. So they're, you know, relaying similar information. It's just kind of how you want to structure it, how you want your, your um, stakeholders kind of read through your logic model. Um, and it just kind of changes kind of the focus of, of you know, what you're trying to do. Um, and so now the fun part. So I'm going to pass it over to Elias, who's going to talk through more of like the style and examples of logic models um, to show you how they can get, you can get really creative and um, how you kind of share this information with your stakeholders. So 
I'll pass it over to Elias. Well, thank you, Julia. So I don't know how, but I looked out to kind of do in the best part of the presentation when to just kind of showing a bunch of different designs of how creative you can get with logic models. So if you are a very creative person, you'll love logic models. And if you aren't that creative, you know, simple is great. For me, that's the way I like to do it. If it's simple, if someone understands what you're trying to tell them, I think, you know, that is the best way to, the best way to go. So like Julia said, uh, she just kind of shared a lot of information about what goes into logic models. So the next step is like, how do I get it all in the logic model? What is the flow? What is the structure? How can I make it look nice? How can I make it look presentable? And also for me, a big key is like knowing who your audience is for a particular logic model. So if you know that it's going to be a very, you know, structural, organized logic model, you have a certain flow. And if you might be working maybe with a younger, a younger crowd or, you know, children, you might want to get creative so where you catch their attention and it's easy for them to see, you know, they like shapes, they like different designs. And we'll see here, there's so many different ways you can get creative with it. So um, I mean, you, if you can go to the, the next slide, please. So for styles, there's kind of three very common, which is horizontal, which is like reading a book. Um, I'm currently learning how to read a different, uh, learning a different language and they read right to left. And it is very complicated because it is so hard to kind of, you know, you, you're stuck in that mindset of going from one way. So not doing it a completely different way is so hard. So, you know, so like I said, simple, you know, horizontal is just, you know, like reading a book, easy. And then vertical. So you have um, top to bottom and bottom to up. The way I like to think of it is, I mean, if you're working from the bottom to the top, you know, it's like a pyramid, the bottom. So like the activities and the inputs build the foundation of a strong logic model. And as you get closer to the top, you're kind of uh, narrowing down to what you really, really want to target, which is where you get your outcomes, your indicators on your goals. So like uh, with the organization, you know, us as staff, we're an input. So like, you know, I, I think staff build a very strong foundation. So that's how I like to kind of look at it is like, you know, the more we input into the organization, the more we can get out of those outcomes and outputs. And then there's the creative, which can kind of go in, in, in a very wide array of different kind of directions. You can go from top to bottom, left to up. You can go from top to down, down to up and make, you know, kind of just make all these different connections. But when you look at the kind of the creativeness of logic models, it, it, there is some kind of a logic to it. You know, it you see how something at the top does connect to something at the bottom and something at the bottom does connect to something on the top and how the middle really does connect to all of it and how it all just, you know, builds off each other to make a very concise path to get to those angles, outcomes, and outcomes. We can go to the next uh, slide menu. And if you can uh, hit one more time, please. I guess a lot. So, you know, this is a, a logic model that we here at United Way work with at our Montgomery County Center. So you can see here, this one is reading from top to bottom. So like, uh, like Julia mentioned that, you know, the, the top is the purpose. So in this way, we're kind of building. So building backwards, I would say, you know, we have the main step and what actions are we going to take to get the goal that we want to achieve? So if you hit the, the next step. So here we have our inputs. And you see the inputs here are kind of just, you know, what we're putting into the program. So here at the Montgomery County Center, like I said, uh, planning, feedback, staff, support, you know, training, you know, training sessions that we had for our agencies. So this is all everything that was being input into, into the programming from United Way of Montgomery County. You can go to the next one menu, please. And here we have our activity. So you can see how the inputs and activities are kind of, you know, all kind of connect and they're just kind of going from left to right. So if you hit the next one, please. And we have our outputs. And here you, you kind of see the flow where we're kind of just going from left to right. And you'll see here with this next um, slide that it, it'll read downward. So I like to think this is a combination of having something that does go both left to right and also uh, vertical as well. So you have the two different components of going vertical and also going horizontal. So this is a kind of where it explains that, you know, you can kind of create the logic model however you would like. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be, if you go from left to right, your whole logic model has to be that particular way. You know, if you see, a pathway for you to kind of, you know, get creative and kind of go left, right, then down. And as long as it all connects and makes sense, you know, you have the freedom to get creative and, you know, make it what you really want to make it in the logic model. And go to the next slide, please, menu. And here we kind of have a, a, bot a bottom to top one. So you can see at the bottom, we have our inputs and activities, and then we have our outputs. You know, we have our kind of uh, short-term goals, medium-term goals, and then we have our long-term goals at the bottom. So um, with this one, 
does anyone have any thoughts, questions, or kind of just comments on how these logic models flow and kind of, you know, the presentation of these logic models? I think that's really great, but I'm I'm wondering, I think we can be overwhelmed with all of the 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 things that our that our agency does. And so is there a way for us to kind of break up logic models for like, I don't know, different, is there like a recipe that you can recommend to break down these logic models so that we can sharpen, you know, that, that content? Uh, if we go too broad, then it may not be a very useful model. Um, how can we get, get, help us get specific? <laughs> so I would say, you know, I used to work in an organization and I actually, before I left that organization to continue that way, I was, you know, working on revamping our logic model for for that for, for a particular donor so um i would say you know something that you could do is having that you know logic model that is organizational wide where you know you have your your input at the, at the organization level and activities and the outputs and you could also have maybe a smaller um logic model that pertains to a particular program so you, you know those are can be given to certain people that know what that particular program is and maybe if if a donor, you know, they just want to know about if you're funded in basic needs and, you know, child child care, youth development, they just want to know what your basic needs services are. You can give them a logic model that specifically explains what, you know, the basic needs program does and how all of that falls into the program, how all of that flows and how those goals are met. Because, you know, if you give someone too much information, that might lead to more questions and, you know, necessarily that information that they don't need, they can get distracted by what you really want them to see. So if you, I would say, if you kind of have, you know, the bandwidth to kind of, you know, create logic models, you know, specific for your programming, but also have that overlapping, you know, organizational wide logic model that you can give to someone who knows, okay, I see that you're funded in three different services and I see how all these connect and flow together to your long-term goals and your outcomes. But I, I also have this smaller version where it's just specific to a particular program that can be given to a particular donor where they just know that, okay, this is how this particular program within your organization works and how that feeds into the overall um, goals of the organization. Did that answer your question, Stephanie? Or kind of help you a little bit? Does any, for me, I personally, this is the logic model that I kind of, speaks to me the most because I like to see things from the bottom up. So I like kind of building a strong foundation, a strong base and kind of just working and narrowing it down to you get to that, you know, that one goal that, you know, if someone comes to you, like what does your organization do? You can be like, this is what we as an organization, like this is what we strive for. This is our main goal. And you can show how, you know, yes, there's these little little smaller goals, but in the end, this is what we as an organization really, really focus on and want to do. Yes, Linda. Yes, I know when we were applying for the Second Century Vision um, grant, it it asked that we show the client's journey through that logic flow or through the program. And so is that something that you recommend doing on a general logic model? I know we added that into our logic models when we were applying to United Way, but I was curious, you don't usually see that as part of a logic model. Are you, are you talking about kind of the S-curve in the integrated client journey version yeah it just asked us to show kind of how the client would progress through that program um, and so we've kept that as part of our logic models since then so i know for second century vision united way didn't necessarily kind of require a logic model in this future in, in this in this um, funding cycle i would say that that kind of pathway i wouldn't I don't want to speak wrong, but I wouldn't kind of consider it a logic model per se, but more of a, of just you know, a collection of, of facts of a journey, a long-term journey. So, you know, you do have your inputs, you do have your activities, but it doesn't necessarily kind of fall into like a, a traditional logic model. I would just say it's more like of a, a long journey and a long pathway for clients to kind of go from point A to point B to point C to finalizing that angle. So yes, in, in a way it could be a logic model, but it doesn't necessarily have to follow like, you know, you need inputs and activities for a client and a client can come to you and be like, Hey, I want to do this. And if that's what they want to do, you know, that's, you know, that's their goal. You know, it doesn't really matter how you get there. As long as that client, you know, kind of dri drives their pathway, their journey and gets to that point. So I wouldn't necessarily kind of say that, you know, if to be part of the SCJ, you have to feed the, the client journey into your logic model to kind of make it fit. Cause you know, we, we understand that not all clients will be ready for the journey. So you don't want to kind of, you know, Oh, this, 
part will just be for one client. So why, why do we have it when, you know, it doesn't really necessarily fit into what you as an organization are trying to do? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think that part of it is like, who's your audience, right? So, you know, you're applying for United Way funding. So United Way wants a journey map, but a journey map and a flow diagram of like how a client is working through a, a program or an intake process. Um, it, it almost takes elements of your logic model and puts it into like, what does that look like in practice? Um, so the logic model can really be the basis of like what's all happening. And then you tease out the activities like that's that's the connection. I think client flow charts, journey maps, logic models are great supplements to a CQI plan, right? Like here's all the different things because people think of the work that y'all are doing in different ways and different avenues. So it's just another thing to like strengthen your, your organizational tool belt. Um, and I, I really appreciated the first question too, about like, we have a big organization and how do we tie all this together? And I saw some head nods whenever y'all, you know, Elias was talking and Stephanie was talking, cause I know that's something I'm curious of anyone else, how they approach that. Um, because I know having the stru similar structures can help like marry together all these different logic models that you have that shows your full program or your full agency's efforts. So I guess there was a question in the chat and I was asked by Christine, does anyone have any, you know, favorite programs or apps? So if anybody has any recommendations, I'm sure we were, the group would love to hear, like, if you have like a kind of like a cheat sheet or like any awesome places that are kind of good for kind of um, generating logic models, I'm sure the group would love to hear. I think Stephanie, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I did. I was just thinking, you know, we have a CQI team. And, you know, I'm not on that team, but I'm a part of generating all of this stuff. And I think I need to have a talk with some of our team members, because sometimes when we're contributing, we don't see how all of that data is used together. If we don't talk regularly, if they meet quarterly, they can have an awesome time. And so maybe, you know, being the contributor, I'm not fully seeing that whole vision. I think that's really important for us to do, to see how that data is being used so that we understand how our you know, beginning logic models, okay, we did it. You know, if we never look at it again, then that's not useful for us, but we need to see how our data is being used and collected. So we understand how our contrib contributions make a difference. And as we get larger, I'm worried that, you know, I might be out of the loop on that. So I think I need to make a few phone calls. And and we'll talk about how CQI feeds into logic models. Um, Later on in the presentation, uh, I will say now that, you know, a logic model isn't ever set in stone, it's ever changing. It out, you know, as your program adapts, you adapt. So then in in order to reflect what the new changes are, you want to make adjustments to the logic model to reflect, you know, what you as a pro what you as an organization are currently doing now. So if you can go to the next slide, please, Mingyu. So here um we have a another logic model that goes um from left to right. And you can see here that you know you have your outputs, your inputs, your outputs. And your outcomes and you also have um here the situation and priorities so kind of this you know logic model is just kind of like you know reiterating and bringing emphasis to what you what this logic model really wants you to pay attention to and target so you can see here and start instead of starting with the inputs you, you're going to get a, like a precursor to what the situation is of that organization and what their priorities are and you can see here that they prioritize their mission their vision their values and as you go through the logic model you'll see the, those different priorities and situations kind of you know all, you know within the logic model and it just it kind of just brings attention to it more and lets you know that this is what they're really focusing and what they really value and you can see at the bottom you know there's the kind of uh, the arrows that are going back and forth between the external factors and your assumptions so you know the external factors are those goals afterwards and what they're trying to accomplish and you know those assumptions it's like if we if we have this and we do this these are the outcomes that we're expecting, you know, with um, once once we have all this in place to help our clients. Does anybody have any questions about this particular logic model? I know this one's a little bit more colorful and it has a lot more information. So I know at first glance it can maybe be a little bit overwhelming because there's just a lot of going on. But you know, when you kind of focus and target, you'll see how it all kind of does come together to 
as one big picture. Nobody has any questions and we'll go on to the next one. I think this one might kind of uh, bring open a lot of eyes. So this one, you know, you see, you know, the first thing you notice is color. And you can and you can maybe see by this one, you know, it's it is a food access initiative. So you can, you kind of see the top part looks like a big apple. And you can see here um, that the inputs are divided into two different things. So you have your your resources and your participants. So the resources are like what is being input by the organization and the participants is, you know, kind of I would say the same kind of like those stakeholders, you know, they just divided it into having those physical inputs and then having those the the more i will say personal side of, of it like who they really want to target or who they're who's coming in and who's really providing you know either funding volunteer hours or just time to be there and kind of help you know lift the program like i said earlier i think staff play a very important role in in the organization so you can see here that they really do value it by kind of having you know the participants as as their own inputs to let them know that you know we really do value your time and your 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 funding and that you play a big part in the organization and then you see here, you know, for the activities and outputs and the, and the goal and the out and the outcomes, you know, they're all kind of divided into their own bubble. So you know that each different bubble is a different activity, output, or, or outcome that they're really trying to target. So I know with this one, um, it does read uh, um top top to bottom. So it's like, you know, we have this, then we can do this, then we can do this, and we can do this, and then this to be to this. So with this one, does anyone have any kind of like, you know, first assumptions about this particular large model? I know it's very different from the other ones where it's all kind of just, you know, you see that there is a connection between the top at the very bottom, you know, you see it going down, but, you know, then how do you make those connections to the side, you know, so that you can kind of looks like each individual circle, it's like its own thing. So as you can see, you know, they got very creative with it, but you know, at first glance, it, 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 it could be something very difficult to kind of follow along and, and make sense of how they all kind of tie in together. So I'll we'll give it a, a few more seconds. If any, I know it's kind of hard to, to grasp it all at once, but if um, no one has any uh, questions or concerns and uh, we'll just um, move over. Yes. I'll, I'll just say just at first glance, it's like it, it's, it's too much. <laughs> you know, it, it could have very valuable information into it, but it's like it's just too much. I've got to read, you know, like the activities. OK, well, great. They, at least they gave me one, two, three, four, five and six to know the order in which to read it in. Um, but it's 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 just it was just a lot. I, I'm like if, just from for me, first off the bat. I'm like, mm. I'm not sure if I would be totally engaged with reading this. <laughs> I know, Stephanie, I think... you, you mentioned in the chat that, it, you know, it looks like it's for donors or for media. And, you know, it could be, you know, like this looks like, you know, something that if you really want to share with, you know, everyone else with, with the outside your organization, that's great. But at the same time, you know, what message, I mean, it looks nice, but really, what are you trying to say? Just kind of getting back to that point of knowing who your audience is and who you want to see and read this logic model. Yeah, I was going to say something similar, Stephanie. I think it's a cool example. It's a little bit busy, but like kind of who your audience for the logic model is. Like you can do one that maybe has like, you know, two or three or four big sections that are really visually appealing and it looks really cool and it gives a very simple kind of overview of what you're doing. And then to follow that, you have like a more detailed one with the whole flow and all the things. And it's just a cool way to like see that you know, this one can be overwhelming, but like you can visualize them in like different ways for different audiences, which is kind of cool. And with that, um, we'll move on to, to the next um, logic model. I mean, if you, so this one for me, when I first saw this one, I was like, oh, wow, like what what is this? There's so much going on here. Like it's kind of hard to to follow along with what what's happening here. So you can see that the outputs and outcomes aren't necessarily in the tree. They're kind of on like, you know, the outputs are the apples and then, you know, the outcomes are like the branches in a way. And, you know, you kind of go to the bottom and it's like, okay, resources, resources, values and strategies. And then you kind of, you see, you branch out into like, I guess the four different categories that they have. So for me, and then you go to like youth programming 
and then you can see you know what they're trying to do is like community reads the garden and public arts project so those kind of look like they sound to me like inputs and activities so you know in the other ones that we looked at we were looking at activities and outputs at the bottom or on the left and now this one looks like they're it's working its way inward from the outside in so you have you know your activities and it kind of just narrows down to the inside of the tree so does anybody have any thoughts about this particular logic model and how you know it, it's very visually appealing but it's very hard to kind of follow along where to start where to finish what's what and how things connect to one another you know beverly mentioned in the chat that you know it's a very good it's good on the eyes but it's just there's no there's no logic to it in a way like you don't know where what how things connect where they're going so again, it's like, yes, it looks very nice. And at first glance, you're like, wow, that's cool. But then when you really get into, into it, you're like, I, I don't know how, where it's going, what direction it's reading. Is it reading left to right, up to down? It's just very difficult to, to follow along, which kind of defeats the purpose of a logic model because there's no logic to it. <laughs> I know I, this one always strikes me too with the key on the outside with like this is what like the cherries or the apples mean and then here's the leaves and the branches it, it's a it that like having a key to understand this I mean that's a big thing for me on this one but and I put in the chat this may not be like the perfect example but um, the fun thing about logic models is you can have them also visually represent what your agency does and so like in my old job in literacy, like we had one that looked like like pages of a book sort of. And so you can kind of incorporate an idea visually of what your agency does through your model. It's just sometimes it's not as clear. And so you gotta be careful with that. Yeah, so maybe like your organization was, you know, outdoors or nature-based, it'd be great to have a tree, but you know, here, I don't really know what this organization does. Like, it's just kind of hard to follow along. And then go to the next slide, please, Mingyu. So here's an, another uh, logic model that kind of, you know, just when you first glance, it just kind of stands out at you with the different colors, the color scheme, you know, it does read left to right, but there is a lot of information in this particular logic model. You know, something that I would recommend is, you know, be strategic in what you want to share in your logic model, you know, sometimes a lot of information is too much information can be too much information or you look at all these different bullets and by the time you get to the last one you probably forgot what the first five were so you know for like for your inputs and activities you know be strategic in what you want to include you know what are the most important things that someone reading this logic model needs to know like what what are those five basic things or six basic things that you know when someone reads them they'll understand what your program is about and how it all connects together and kind of you know takes you from point a all the way down to point b and then you can see here you know you have your arrows at point going left to right and then you have at the very kind of the bottom left corner you have the long-term goal but looking at this logic model there isn't if you're not really paying attention you, you don't really know how it connects together like you know you have a long-term goal you're like okay cool that's great to know what your goal is but how are we going to get there do your outcomes outputs activities and inputs you know how how does you know implementing in the agency leadership and support how does that tie into having strong communities and thriving families and you know save children who are ready to learn so when you look at these things you know the goal is you know save save children who are ready to learn but when you look at the inputs you know you don't really see how how that connects like you have sustainable funding technology but you don't know how all that ties in to what their long long-term goal is so does anybody have any thoughts about this one you know at first glance it looks very nice very cool very easy on the eyes very colorful but again like the previous one they're just you know it's hard to kind of follow the workflow of what they're trying to explain to someone Yeah, it does. It does it like a textbook. And, you know, for, for most of us, like I know for me, reading a textbook is like, yeah, I don't want to do it ever again in my life. So it kind of it just really kind of just. I, I would say for someone reading this, like I think they're defeated upon arrival because it's just like, you know what, I don't really have time to look at this right now and kind of really get dive into like what this program really is trying to do. I'm assuming you with that, can we go to the next slide, please? 
so now this one looks uh, you know no color so you know that's the first thing that i kind of noticed when looking at this particular logic model um you have your inputs which you know they have one they have their activities and they show how you know that one input is connected to each different activity and then in the activity you see how they show how each different activity is connected to a particular output. You see at the bottom that the policy and regulatory action, you know, it is connected to multiple, to multiple outputs. And then as you kind of go left to right, you start seeing how that, you know, you started off with four arrows and you started off with five, and then you start seeing that there's two arrows, two arrows, one arrow, and then two arrows. So you, you start seeing where it starts kind of narrowing down a little by little till you get to those kind of lat, those focal points that they really, really want you to target. Yes, Stephanie. Um, how specific do we need to be? I mean, are the logic models more helpful if we include data targets? Like we're going to see these this percentage of clients, you know, in terms of outcomes or or like, for example, this seems just really general, like, you know, how quickly we see people. I don't know. It's, it's supposed to be high level, but like how much data do we need to add in here to make these logic models useful for us as a program? But I know that I would say with that with, with that particular question, it's like know who you're really trying to target. If it's like you know, you know those high level donors and board members, and if, if you're working towards a grant, and you re, and you know you know that they want to know that specific information that yes, we're going to serve sixty percent of this uh, population, this you know X percent of of this population. You know, and you really want to get to that nitty gritty of like what your program is actually going to do. I would say yes, go you know provide us you know as much that as possible but if it's you know if you're walking down the street and you're handing a paper to someone and you want them to know what your program is you know they might not necessarily care that you're serving 60 percent of a hispanic population or 60 percent of an Afri african-american population they just want to know that you're serving you know minor you know minorities in a particular area yeah and i kind of kicked that the question back to you stephanie of like what makes sense for your program like your staff like your team would it help y'all to see on your logic model that we're striving to get 80 percent we're striving to get 100 people served right and so if that works then yeah like add that in um so you have that alignment i think like then like it's your roadmap. it's so everybody's on the same page and would having that kind of stuff help i mean you know your team best some people might be like oh that goal it's it's audacious like i can't see it you know let's just keep grinding and keep working and we'll get there so maybe maybe not it, it really depends um on what works for you thanks that's really helpful i'm always about smarter goal setting so i'm like where's the smart in there <laughs> yeah and I know that I keep saying, you know, kind of depends on like what your program is. I would say there is no right or wrong way to do a logic model. It's really, it's honestly really what you want it to be, what you want it to portray, what you want, what information you want to share. So like, if you want to have, you know, a straight line going from A to B, B, C, D, awesome. If you want to get really, you know, creative and go up and down and snake around and come back to the end, you know, that's awesome. It's really, you know, what you want your logic model to do, what to describe and, and pretty much like explain your program. And I think that's the big shift of focus for United Way that logic models aren't required for us anymore. Like you don't have to submit one to us. They can aid in your CQI plan. Um, and so with that funder hat on, because I know my friends, you know, next door down the road at other foundations and other funders might be like, but we want a logic model and it needs to include X, Y, and Z. So, okay, so maybe you're going to need to create a logic model for them that includes X, Y, and Z. And so having that, like this knowledge and like, okay, how's this going to fit and how does this work for us too? Um, can just strengthen how you're communicating what you're doing. Go to the next slide, please, Mingyu. Yeah, yeah. So here we know we're back to a very, very colorful um, logic model. So you know, compared to the one that we just saw, you know, there's a lot of a lot of information on this one too. But I don't I don't know if anybody can tell me you know something particular about this logic model that you know off a of first glance you aren't necessarily seen in it. So we talked about there's uh, typically four different kind of, you know, baseline factors that you want to include in logic models. So if you have your inputs and activities, and then you have your outcomes, and there's one more that isn't showing in this um, particular logic model. I don't know if anybody's able to notice it. If not, you know, I can just share that, you know, yes, Tiffany, you know, there's no outputs in this logic model. 
So there's a whole big component that is that is missing in this one. So you know, it looks very nice. It looks awesome, but it's not you know grasping you know or giving the full picture of what your organization or your program does. So you're missing like you know we have activities, but now what are we sending out? Like what are we going to use to kind of start measuring those outcomes, being short term and long long term. Um, anybody has any thoughts or questions? If not, we can uh, hop to the next one. We have two more uh, different examples after the box. So here's kind of where we get very, very creative with the logic model. So you see here in the inputs, at the bottom, you see the COA asthma program and the ZAP asthma program and the school personnel, how, you know, they're kind of going, you know, in different directions, the activities as well. You know, there is a logic to it where it all does connect to one another so you're seeing a very kind of like you know meticulous why this is here there is a reason why this is here because it's all kind of connected but it's just very you know with arrows you start looking at one arrow then you're like wait what is it here why is it going over there why is it coming over here oh, okay but if you really pay attention and start looking at it you see how you know okay this does really connect to, to these two different activities and okay this activity does connect to these two different outputs and this output you no know, these three outputs do do connect to this short-term goal and these two connect to this intermediate outcome and then you know this one connects to this long-term goal and then they all connect you know in one way to what the overarching goal of the organization is yeah it's very very easy to kind of get lost in it beverly like you look at something and you're like okay like kind of looks like it's going in a full circle but if you know when you pay attention you know it does really make sense in a way but again you know this organization might be sharing too much information. Could they, you know, concise their outcomes into maybe three or four instead of five? I'm sure that's a possibility, you know, but, you know, I, they just feel, you know, that they want to share the full picture of the organization. So, you know, it makes it a little bit difficult to kind of really understand what, how it all does connect and go and flow. Let me go to the next slide, please, Mingyu. So here we have a, another one where we have, you know, activities and the outputs and the outcomes so you know three different just three different of the four and you can see here how you know what their activities are you know it looks like it's a a, a schooling program for young children so you know they kind of did make it relatable to their audience which is not necessarily the kids but you know when they see it you know oh, it's a, you know it's a youth program they understand how you know it looks very appealing and kind of gives a perception if you look at this you you, you make the assumption of like uh, they might work with the with uh, kids and you see here how they have those, you know, they even broke their outcomes down to initial, intermediate, and long-term. So their initial is, you know, under one year, they try to achieve those um, outcomes and then they're inter intermediate from that one to five-year range. And then they have those long-term goals where they're, you know, working on a, on a five-year plus plan with, with those individual clients. So anybody have any comments about this particular logic model? I saw some in the comments that they really, really like this, the visuals of this logic model. Not with that, I'll go to the next slide, please. Menu. So, here's some kind of just some tips and use for the logic model. So, go to the next slide, please. So, I know you mentioned kind of having containing those necessary elements. So, you know, it's having the resources, the outputs, the activities, and the outcomes. And you can determine what you want to have in those four. You know, like if you really want to get, if you want to include every single output or activity that you have in an organization, that's great. You know, then you got to ask yourself, does it really need to be that detailed? So again, like kind of knowing your audience and knowing that as, as long as you have those four basic um, high level topics, you can kind of just fill in, fill in underneath and start making the connections from A, B, C, and D. And then also, um, you know, it passes the stranger test. So like I said earlier, if you're walking down the street and you give someone a piece of paper that has a logic model, are they understanding what your programming does? You know, do they know, like I work for X organization, do they know that, you know, my organization does this and they help these, and then they help people achieve this or help people be this. So it just, you know, uh, within with us within organizations, we know our programs left and right. So when we say a particular term, we know what it means. So, you know, just having that language where, you know, everyone understands, you know, it's kind of universal where if you give it to someone, 
they know exactly what it's going to be. And also, like Jessica said, you know, have those meetings with your leadership group, with your team, you know, y'all, y'all brainstorm, y'all huddle, you know, it's not something that one person needs to take on to create a logic model for the organization. When I was in that particular process for myself, I created the initial draft and then I was sending it over to my CQI director. Then I would say to my development director and then kind of go into our, our direct service staff for them to kind of get their input and make sure that it was a, a collaboration between all of us at the organization to make sure that it's not just the vision of one person, but you know, you're getting multiple views and making sure that you, you're grasping a very huge, uh, clear picture of what your organization is on all these different levels. And also, like we mentioned earlier, it is a living document. It's an ever-changing document that, you know, it might be right today, but then tomorrow it might be something different. And, you know, the next day it can be something completely different. So always, you know, making sure that you're going back to this logic model and, you know, reassessing what you're doing and making sure that it does really paint the most accurate description of, and picture of what your organization is currently doing and what they're doing and how they're doing it to serve their clients. And go to the next slide, please, menu. So again, you know, it's it's a living document, you know, you know, gotta foster that critical thinking for planning process and kind of going back to that CQI, you know, that logic model, you know, it helps you identify areas that maybe you need help, you need to work a little bit extra on. So if you see something, you know, instead of just having it there and it's just leaving there, you kind of go back as a group and you know what, maybe this particular outcome isn't what we're really targeting. So how can we either do we need to remove it or how do we you know, better align this outcome to demonstrate what our program is really trying to do. And, you know, it promotes that understanding and communication. Again, you know, kind of having it organizational wide where everybody, you know, has an input. Like Stephanie said, you're going to, you know, you're going to send emails out. You're going to start talking to people to make sure that you're, you know, getting the right input in first and making sure that, you know, you're, you're, you're making progress to making sure that it's just the most accurate thing it can be. And I've said that a bunch of times, but I can't really stress enough that it, if that logic model is accurate, it really saves you a lot of time to make sure that you don't you don't have to repeat yourself 10 different times to people like they see they read it and they're like, okay, I know what your program's about. I'm in. Like I understand what why you're asking for funding because it really doesn't align with what we're trying to do as a donor, as a funder. And again, you know, allow program program to monitor progress. Um for me, like I mentioned earlier, um, I was kind of tasked with um revamping our logic model for uh, a particular funder at my old organization. And I can say that, you know, with that work, we were able to increase our funding. Uh, uh, you know, that was the big thing they wanted us to do was, you know, so, you know, that does make a, a big difference. Or like if that logic model explains your programming to a, to a donor or, you know, the volunteers who are reviewing their applications, you know, it makes a big help because they necessarily don't get the full picture of what your organization does. So they can just read and follow along pretty easy. It just makes it easier on everybody for them to not have to ask questions of you later. And, you know, at a first glance, you're like, okay, cool. I really know what this program is about and I can get behind it. And, I, you know, I will, I will, you know, fund you and, you know, let you be and do what you do best. And also, you know, it serves as a framework for the data collection and evaluation. And it kind of just ties back into the whole CQI process where, you know, it's ever living, it's ever changing, it's, an, it's a constant evaluation of your programming. So, you know, three years down the line, you come back and maybe three of those different outputs aren't necessarily what you worked on anymore. You can kind of just get back with the group, get together and just evaluate and revamp that logic model to kind of just give that most accurate description of what you are doing and how you're doing it in the community. And with that, mean you go to the next slide. So it looks like um, we're kind of close to time. So I don't know, we had kind of a, a breakout group activity. So I don't know if you want to do like a five, five or 10 minute breakout session where, um, oh, I guess we just have to wrap up. So um, with the wrap up, you know, I would really kind of want to get someone's perspective on like, you know, something that you learned today that you didn't necessarily know. So if anybody wants to share something that, you know, they learned today that, that is going to help them moving forward with their logic models. Um, I, I would like to share that I learned, I love the visuals because I, I knew about logic models and I consider myself an expert, but I never thought about all these different ways to present them and to make them more interesting and visually engaging. I think that makes a big, huge difference. So thank you for sharing those different 
models. Um, I'm, I'm loving it. And, and for sure, it helps for, for so many things. Everything you said, it's, it's totally accurate. So thank you so much. And we have you know, a couple ideas in the chat. I think the one that said to me is like, what not to do with the logic model. I think, like I said, you know, it's very specific to your organization. So like, if you think that tree is what will help you best, you know, please, you know, go ahead and use the tree, you know, just make it to where it's a little bit better to understand so people can follow your programming. And um, did anything today strike, you know, someone like, oh, wow, like, yes, that, that makes total sense. Like it's an aha moment where it's like, yeah, why didn't I think of that before? Like this makes complete sense for me and my program. And that's something that I'm going to implement um, in my organization moving forward. I think as a grant writer, one thing that struck me is that I, by creating it as a real powerfully visual representation of a program, I could attach it as like an additional document for a grant application because you know, some people really learn by reading, and so they might get a lot about my program from reading the application, but it might really help someone who's a visual learner to see that representation. I could see where some of these just have a lot more punch than the ones we're currently using. And I would say for me, like when I was work, I went to like a, a mini workshop for logic model, what stood out to me the most was like, okay, cool i don't know how to do it like it all you know just making sure that everything connected to the next step in the process was for me was that moment where it was like oh that makes sense i know now how to work from the bottom kind of work backwards so this is my goal what what outcomes do i need to do to achieve that goal what outputs do i need to achieve those outcomes and what inputs do i need for those outputs so for me working backwards was a like, oh, wow, you know, I, I always saw it one particular way. But then after that workshop, I was like, okay, there's, there's a way to, to work for most of, you know, you know what your angle is and how do I get there? I think it's a lot easier for some of us than, you know, starting out at the bottom and then working your way up and trying to figure it out that way. So for me, that was like that. Oh, yes, that makes so much sense and so much easier now to work. And for me, uh, I mean, I, I really went uh, big picture with this. It just struck something uh, huge for me because I, I I knew I was in the weeds of everything. I'm, let me go back. I'm a data and compliance manager. And my compliance part has been lacking because I'm, I'm in the weeds. You know, we've got all these different programs, all this data collection, data entry, and monthly reporting. So this made me realize that I need to make sure that the staff that I I'm now I've got, got more people working with me now, so that's going to help. At first, it was just me, and now I was two. So now I have people who can do a lot of the re monthly reporting stuff. I need to get back to, you know, looking at, looking back, or and at creating our logic models. I know we have some, and actually focusing on from an agency perspective what where we need to be, and from a program perspective, you know, are we following what what we're trying to achieve because we're just busy doing everything that the focus is not on managing the big picture from an agency and a program uh, perspective. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I really want the 2023 to be starting here at the big picture and working down. I don't know how to say that, but that's what I'm that's what that, that's what I got out of this that I, I need to be more top level. And Cheryl, I uh, saw that you had your hand up. Yeah, thank thank you. I I wanted to comment a little bit. I think it talks a bit about what Amanda is saying. When I learned about this uh, United Way process many years ago, there was a, a partner document that went along with it, and I refer to it as the measurement framework. I don't know if that's still um, United Way terminology, but like to me, there's always an additional piece of, you know, you identify what your um, short, medium, long-term goals are, but then you have to figure out really how you're gonna measure them and what all your indicators are gonna be and that kind of thing. Um, I'm curious if there's gonna be another session because I think it addresses this idea of really how do we make this a working document and get out of it. Um, what we actually need. And I just want to make one other point before, um, before I leave it to that measurement framework answer. One of the things I learned several years ago is when you, um, when we develop um, short and medium and long-term 
objectives to do it collectively as an organization, typically on a programmatic level makes it a little bit easier, but we, we've used what's called a card sort. And I'm, I don't know if anybody else has ever used that, but it's like where everybody just gets um, a post-it and every single post-it has a goal or an objective that we're trying to achieve for a program. And so it comes at it from everybody's different perspective of the goals and objectives they're trying to achieve. And then when you have all of those post-its, I mean, it could be 50, 100, whatever, then someone or a group of people put them into kind of silos and then they group them into smaller bits. And those are the pieces of information that you can construct your actual outcomes from. To me, it's a really super way to make it collective in its design rather than it just being out of coming out of one person's head. So Cheryl, I would say, um, I'll probably kick this to Jessica, but I know we're always looking for ways, uh, we're looking for new topics to bring to coffee and quality. So one thing I would highly recommend is I know we always, we always kind of give that feedback survey and Jessica just put the link in the chat, but we're always looking for ideas of what to bring to the group, you know, so it kind of sounds like, you know, we got that initial part, but not what's that next part. So, you know, that's something that everyone is really interested in learning about. We would appreciate it if you would just, you know, in the feedback survey, you know, input you like what you really want us to talk about. And we can bring those topics back to the group and have those, you know, more in-depth discussions about, yes, we had the intro to logic models, but now we can kind of get a little bit more in the weeds of those outputs and indicators and those metrics to make sure we're collecting those medium, short and long-term outcome goals. Yeah, no, definitely. It, it sounds like a topic I have been kicking around with the team at Kinder Institute on how do we like more effectively measure what the work is happening. And so there's this like data analysis type workshop we are kicking around very loosely right now, but this is it's going to be coming up. So I'm glad to hear there's this movement toward it. And maybe we'll tie it back to this logic model training. Um, I know our February session is going to be on focus groups. Um, and it's by someone who is, it's not a researcher per se, but it's, you know, she's doing focus groups in her nonprofit, actually Girl Scouts in Dallas. And so really excited for her to come in and kind of share how focus groups or how they're collecting client feedback rather than client surveys. Just wanted to give that plug, Ellie, Elias, while, while you are doing the wrap up. And then you know, we have two more uh, topics. So we have the action. So we kind of, I know Amanda, you mentioned like what your next action steps are going to be. And Linda, you also mentioned a few. So does anybody ha else have like, you know, any steps that you, they might take or, or are thinking of taking, you know, after they learned about logic models here today? So I don't see anything in the chat or anybody unmuting. So now, um, the last thing, does anybody have any questions about, you know, I know Cheryl, you brought a very good question about, you know, kind of go into the next step. So does anybody have any questions about anything else that we talked about today? I don't think so. So with that, uh, Jessica, I'll kick it back over to you. Sure, thank you. Um, well, thank you all so much for joining today on, I know I've been dropping in this chat, the feedback form. Um, and then, yeah, here's our schedule. So we meet quarterly for coffee and quality. We have our next one in May. Um, if you register for that, you'll see the description about what that one's about, but it is about focus groups as a way to collect client feedback um, from a very practical application perspective. So really excited for Rhonda to come in and share. Um, in August and November, we'll have additional coffee and qualities. And I think kind of what we've been talking about today and how to measure, um, that's good. you'll see that coming up in those sessions. So um, please go ahead and RCP, put those on your calendar to join us. We'll be on Zoom from 9 to 1030 on those days. Um, and as always, we want to make coffee and quality the space for you, for your learning to continue to, to um, advance this for you. And so please share your feedback with us. We look at it. We take that into consideration with all of our planning. Um, and so please give a big round of applause to the LAC team, um, to Julia, Mingyu, Elias. Great job. Um, thank you all so much. And thank you all for your engagement. Y'all were amazing. Love this conversation. We'll share out the slides, share out the recording, post on team some resources shared today. Um, but thank you all so much. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Um, and thank you again for joining.
Bye. Take care. Oh, four minutes back too. Bye.